Okay, so let's go. Welcome to this session. My name is uh, Håkan Kodén from uh, I'm the CEO of Eurostep Group. Uh, the session is about managing complexity of product data and the, the key speaker is really Irin Gustafsson from Volvo Cars. I will just give uh, a quick introduction and also end the presentation with a few slides as well. And maybe some of you remember uh, us. We have been here uh, for several years now. Last year we talked about, uh, or oh, last year we sponsored a presentation from Volvo Trucks who talked about collaboration with uh, uh, a Chinese partner, primarily in, in a joint venture uh, concepts. They have established a solution for that based on our software share space. The year before it was Siemens Industrial Turbines who talked about how they connect with the suppliers based on, on the same solution. So I'm really happy uh, to have yet another good example. Uh, for, uh, and this uh, is Volvo Cars, who talk about how they actually survive in a very changing world of ownership and, uh, and products and so on, I guess. So uh, keeping it really short, uh, welcome on stage, Irene. And thank you very much for coming here. Thank you. Okay. So good morning, my name is uh, Irian Gustafsson and I come from Volvo Cars, as Håkan said. Uh, and uh, we're located in uh, Gothenburg, Sweden. Uh, currently I'm working as a director for Pro Process CAD and PDM development, belonging to the R&D department. And uh, I worked about 20 years in or around Volvo Cars with PLM issues and for example being uh, very involved in the projects where we integrated with the Ford Motor Company and also when we separated from Ford Motor Company. So there's a lot of uh, experience from that journey. And uh, I will talk a little bit about our company, where we are right now, uh, what our challenges are, looking into the historical view of corporations and then talking about a technical solution that we are setting up currently and uh, how we have solved that and the issues around it. So starting with, with where we are today, we are a company that produces cars, should not be mixed up with uh, the company Volvo AB, also located in uh, Gothenburg, but producing the trucks, the buses and so on. It's two different companies, we just share the brand. Last year we sold 500,000 cars, which was a record for us, hitting the 500,000 limit. Uh, we are 28,000 employees, around half of those working in the Gothenburg area. And we have 2,300 retailers in around 100 countries. If we look a little bit further into the global footprint, it um, looks like this. We have a history of being present here in Europe. We have our R&D center there in Sweden, Gothenburg. We have uh, two plants, two vehicle plants, one in Torslanda and one in Ghent. And we have an engine plant in Skövde, in Sweden. And in the recent years, we have expanded in China, where we now have two vehicle plants and one engine plant and a small R&D center. And all of that has happened in the last five years. Uh, we are about to establish a plant in the US, in South Carolina, and that will be up and running in 2018. So as you can see, a lot of things are happening and uh, we are aiming towards the vision and the vision is to be the world's most progressive and desired premium brand and of course we can't do that completely on our own we need to seek different kind of corporations and uh, we started this uh, journey, the transformation journey in 2011, where we uh, initiated the new transformation strategies. We had a new product structure the year after, 
and uh, 2013 we had a new design direction. And uh, from that we launched the XC90 in 2014. And by then China was our biggest market, so things really hit off on the Chinese market. We had the three factories in China up operational. And uh, last year, as I said, we had the sales uh, record for the volumes. We made the turnaround in the US, going from a, a decreasing market to an increasing market. And there were several awards for the XC90. This year, we see the launch of the S90 and V90. And looking into the future, we will continue to launch vehicles on our two platforms, the larger platform SPA and the smaller platform CMA, which I will come back to later on. And we also uh, work with the autonomous drive, the self-driving cars, which you might have seen in, in the media. A lot of debate about them, but that's not the topic for today. Uh, and we are aiming at 800,000 cars in the future, not setting exactly when, but that's where we are really trying to get. And uh, in order to do this, we do need uh, corporations. And looking back, historically, we had some uh, corporations which we learned a lot from that we could take into the future. We have a corporation with Mitsubishi in the 90s where we had common production in the Netherlands underneath the umbrella of Nedcar, and it was the V40. Uh, when we were owned by Ford Motor Company, we had two common platforms. The C1, which was the small platform producing the V40 from a Volvo perspective, and that was with Ford, Mazda and Volvo. And we had the uh, cooperation with Land Rover, Ford and Volvo on a larger platform. And we had some common production as well in a CKD plant. Um, right now we have a smaller platform together with Geely and it's run by a company called Sevt, which also is a Swedish company, lo not a Swedish company, but it's located in Sweden and uh, they run the platform development and it's Volvo and Geely cars that's being built <coughs> upon that platform. And as you can see, we have changed owners ownership uh, twice, going from being a Volvo group company into being owned by Ford Motor Company and then being owned by Zhejiang Geely Holding. And as you also could see, the corporations, they continue after the change of ownership and the new ones start with a little bit of a drag into the new ownership. This means that we have a lot of issues regarding IP rights, keeping the information absolutely separated from each other. And um, that is also a challenge. And... Uh, Things that we bring into the future, having learned from this journey of cooperations, that is that uh, there will always be more cooperations. Sometimes when you work in the PLM area, it feels like some, somewhere else there are a lot of people thinking up a huge amount of cooperation ideas and you think, oh my God, how should this work? How should we really sort it out when it comes to the pragmatic side of it? But there are, of course, a lot to gain in all of those cooperations. So it's a good journey that's going on. Uh, we also have complex assignments that we outsource to different companies. It could be, be a complete car that is developed by somebody else or portions of a car. And uh, we also share a little bit of technology with other OEMs. The time to market, once it's decided that we should have some kind of joint venture, then we re need to be really fast to get it up and running. So we have to have the ideas and the concepts sort of lying on the shelf in order to be fast. And we do have to maintain our uh, flexibility. 
the project we run with Ford after having integrated quite heavily into our company, that was a huge project in order to uh, separate things. So what we try to do now is to keep an interface rather than having an integration in the Geely uh, uh, company. Okay, so what are we doing then? We are uh, taking the approach, which is quite simple. We want the Volvo car users to work in their own context and their own environment. And uh, we focus on the actual parts, the shared technology and the platform. It's not really a platform that comes together and you could treat it as one object. It's it's a bunch of parts, if you describe it like that. So we focus on the individual parts and try to map those towards the partner and keeping it as simple as possible. I'll come back to that a little bit as well. And the basic technology in this, or the concept rather, is that we, here we have Volvo cars, and we put the data sharing in the middle, of course, and we try to have just one tie into this data sharing. So we have done the generic mapping of the Volvo information objects towards the uh, generic piece. And then we could tie up partners one by one towards this data sharing. And uh, we keep the solution outside of our Volvo cars firewall of course, this is secured in many ways, so the data is absolutely safe. But it's not entwined into our own uh, environment, which means that we know that we could, we could decide what kind of information do we want to share, and we do that actively. And the way we've set it up, if we dig a little bit deeper into the actual solution, uh, we have a solution that we call the STC, Shared Technologies Control. That's a Volvo uh, name for it. It's a share space solution. And we connect that with our main bomb system. It's an in-house system called KDP. And we have decided what kind of objects do we think we need to share, and we've mapped that out into this space. And uh, the users are then working in this environment here, but being able to look at it from their perspective, coming back to that a little bit. Uh, and we then share the data with the partner. In this case, the first partner is Sevt, the Geely company running the small platform, CMA. And they have their users working in their own context, and we share the CAD information uh, in a straight team center to team center connection. And if we look at how it's set up, we have, uh, uh, if we start by this, we share nightly batches between this STC solution and uh, uh, the SEVT environment. So everything that's being uh, updated during the day that is sent during the night, so we have fairly fresh information. It's always a compromise. How complex do we want the solution? How often do we need the data? Nightly is a good compromise there. And uh, the users in the Volvo area, they work in this system, and from this system they could trig a web service where they actually reach the information that's been sent from here and they do it in a sort of look and feel environment that's the same as their main KDP system. It's actually another system, but they don't notice that since it looks the same, which is a good way of treating that. And uh, we share the CAD files also nightly with this uh, GSF solution that's built into Team Center. It's different Team Center setups since we're different companies and we run that individually, it's different setups so they could differ a little bit in version and uh, patches and so on. 
So we need to set this up in a good way so we don't get disturbed if one of the parties are upgrading their versions. Um, and then we connect on this side, we connect the part information towards the correct CAD file that's being captured from here. So that's the basic setup that we are using. And uh, this uh, might look <coughs> familiar or sort of familiar from a lot of different uh, companies, but we do all have data structures in our companies. We divide the products into partitioning, we uh, control it by <coughs> features, variants, effective in and effective out time, a lot of things. And uh, it's easy to walk into the trap of wanting to map everything towards each, each other, which makes a really complex setup. So instead of trying to find something to map each line towards, we have focused on the lowest level, as I said earlier, on the actual part level. So we map on the part level we leave the other parts of the structure and the information. Since most of that is in a context, it's how that part fits into that specific individual of a vehicle. We don't need to map that. We do that in our own environment. And it looks so much simpler, of course. And uh, we do the mapping, part and part version, towards part and part version. And then we have attributes underneath, and that is partner attributes. For example, we might have different maturities in the two companies. So we state what kind of maturity is uh, used in the partner system. And then from all we have learned about each other's maturity, do we have something that is similar or do we have to make an evaluation and actually decide what that should be in our own company? So that, in that way, we treat this as information and control our own attributes based on uh, the information that we get from the other party. And uh, to summarize this, uh, we have uh, experience has proven that the importance of integration is really high in the early stages of a project. So as fast as we can be up and running, the better it is. And uh, integration should not be built into the internal structure because it takes away the flexibility. A large portion of collaborative data is important here and now. Long term only li is a limited part of the data that needs to be saved. So it means that we, we don't keep all the data that we map, we keep the things that we actually release in our internal systems. And building big brick by brick from the ground is proven to be the best foundation. That's our learning from previous corporations. Okay, so I hand it back to Håkan and then we have some uh, questions and sum it up after that. Yep. Thank you very much. You. Yes. Thank you. So I think this is a very good example how about the pragmatic solution in the, in the PLM domain and the, the very detailed uh, slides that Irene was showing here was I asked uh, I asked her to do that because the devil is really in the details. You can talk about these high level things, but in the end you, you turn up with this kind of small thing that is really a, a big pain. Uh, so well done, also on the detail level. Uh, just a few, uh, a few slides to, to sum this up and then we have time for questions to to, to Iran. Uh, we talked about how fast did we do this from sort of day one on, until we had the production up and running. And we agreed that six months was probably a good, a good time frame. I know we did some pre-stud and we implemented, but it was so, sort of a, 
uh, quick product, it responded to the need of the, of the organizations and the product. Uh, but still, how, how do we, from a Eurostep viewpoint, how do we get this kind of speed and even more rapid into, into any kind of implementation? And I think Irene was touching on things uh, that are, of course, relevant, focus on things, limit the scope, build, you said build brick by brick or something, uh, grow as needed. I think that's absolutely fundamental because you can, you can design the most uh, fantastic system for, and we all know this since we are in the PLM business, we can keep on designing things for years and hopefully not avoid to take it even into production because those are the best systems. Uh, so do this, but keep it uh, under control. And just a couple of comments from our side. We, th this is run on uh, something called ShareSpace uh, version 7. Now we are sort about to release an, uh, something we call ShareSpace Nova. And we have focused even harder on making this easy to use. So things like easy to set up, best practice processes. We have actually captured a couple of co collaboration processes. So you can st get going with ShareSpace without even programming. So this is even the improvements over the last two, two years. Uh, by configuration, not customization. And we know the cost of, the cost of customization is really tough. Uh, scalable, of course, uh, security, Irene mentioned security, and it's always been in, in the heart of uh, what we're doing. Uh, On-premise, you had something uh, cloud, but you don't, didn't comment on it, but you're running it as a, as a cloud-based service for, uh, uh, hosted by CGI. Uh, and then we also work a lot with Microsoft, so we have the Office 365 uh, integration done. And if you come by our booth, because we're part of the exhibition, we can talk about these three things. We are, the first, things we are, thir first thing we are releasing is something called InReach, which is targeting uh, collaboration, primarily in the extended enterprise, like uh, Rian was talking about. We have two other end user products coming up. One is InControl, which is targeting uh, MDM for PLM data, because MDM today is not really about PLM data. It's, it, it's a product information, but it's port numbers, it's pricing and so on. But PLM data is different in, in terms of complexity. But we, we think uh, ShareSpace is a good fit for that as well. And then we are targeting also something we call uh, ShareSpace in life, and that is how you support service engineers out in the field, because we don't even if you're a service engineer in the field, you have a mobile device, whatever, but typically these are connected to the one system you use. You have an SAP system or whatever that are connected, that you're connected to. But we believe the field service people there, they need more data. They need some data from the PLM system, from the spare part system, from the warranty system, or CRM system, from the many systems. So again, this thing which are space of Taking data from different sources, doing the consolidation, doing it in a secure way is a good fit also for that market. So uh, we believe anyone has the potential to improve in their PLM collaboration. We haven't seen a perfect example, and you're even laughing. <laughs> there's a lot of potential. I, there, of course, there's a lot of potential to improving even in PLM. We know that, but PLM collaboration for sure. Uh, meet us at the booth. We are four people from, from Eurostep here. Uh, and thank you. And then we have some time for questions. And there is a microphone running around, uh, if I may say so. <laughs> so please use that, because then we can actually capture the question and the answers in, in, the, in the video. Sure. Uh, my name is Thomas Kamps from Conweaver. Um, I have a question with respect to the collaboration model. Is it a semantic one or is it one that's just from one OEM to the other? Because if it's a semantic one, it means there's changes involved on both sides and changes create problems, uh, particularly inconsistencies. So a mapping of data uh, uh, from one side to the other typically uh, uh, is not enough so because uh, you have to deal with the inconsistencies then. Is this a problem in, in, in your case or not? Uh, we have to be uh, aligned when we do changes on one side or the other regarding the objects that we map. We need to uh, um, change a little bit on both sides 
I would say, if that answers your question. So it, it is a mapping. We use the shared space in the middle. So we map towards that built on uh, the step standard. Um, but of course, if there are changes I mean, to, typically well, yeah. uh, the variant structures and the variant languages are expressed in different ways in, on one OEM yeah. and the other one. Yeah. So it's not a straight mapping that you can do. No, but that's why we don't map that kind of things. Okay. We map the most simple objects, which is the part, part to part, and then we keep the variants as just partner information. Okay, sort of I saying see. that this partner has used those variants, and then we manually use something that's a little bit uh, like that, but goes into our context. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Welcome. My name is Axel Sikora from Offenburg <laughs> University. You can point. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. I think there was one over there. Yeah, okay. And you go ahead. Oh. Yeah, it's a very good presentation. I work, do you have any experience with uh, sharing the software versions between your partners and how you deal with the, with the sharing software components? Yeah. Uh, we have just started to do that with the, the, the SEVT partner. Uh, they are a fairly new company, so they haven't really set exactly how they should work with software. And that's why the mapping isn't really up and running. Uh, when we had a cooperation with Ford, uh, we did most of the software development, so it was a one way just sending the software. So the answer is no, we haven't really mapped that okay, because we you. haven't run into that. Well, if I may comment, the, the, other yeah. examples, the other examples I was showing that we discussed uh, last year and the year before that, they have uh, software included okay. in the shared. Yeah. Okay, I think you had a question. Yeah, uh, no, I would like to ask uh, my question. Um, if I understood correctly, you have been designing a quite Volvo-centric uh, system or approach. Um, however, uh, most of your first-year uh, suppliers won't deliver only to you, but also yeah. to other OEMs. How do they deal with your model? How uh, are they facing similar models from other OEMs? I think it's a problem that the suppliers do have, and they have to find their neutral way of being able to support different kind of uh, uh, companies. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. It's from down there. Uh, Graham Foster from Percal. Um, could you say something more about how you manage the, the, um, the permissions to, to modify? Because presumably you've got uh, information going both ways. So you have it originated in one system and then moving to another system and then maybe back to the first system to modify or, or, or improve. Mm. You know, who, who, how does it work that they know we, which we one? We have a part master. So we know one of the parties are owning the, the part as such, owning the engineering development. So we know where the master is. And most of the time it's just going one way for the part changes of that part. It's not a collaboration in terms of doing changes, sending them back, and evolving the design. Okay, yeah, got it. So the, the master always stays in one place? Yes, yeah, okay. and uh, this uh, tracking tool keeps uh, ahead of that, so there is a marking knowing which party owns that specific part number, and the other is a copy. Okay, thanks. We, we, uh, just to comment on that, in shared space, we have built in a concept called uh, originating system, so you can actually keep, keep, which is very important because you need to understand where you can change, uh, where you're allowed to change the data if it's, you know, that system or that. So, yeah, the ownership of the data needs to be mastered inside the organization, but of course also across the extended enterprise. Uh, Mark Halpern from Gartner. Uh, one of the comment, how are you doing, Irene? One of the comments that you made that really caught my attention was your comment, integration should not be built into internal structures that increases complexity. Mm. I couldn't agree more, yet the software vendors are building more integration into the internal structures and calling them platforms. Mm. And, um, 
I guess the best way to ask the question is, how are you managing the vendors in this regard? <laughs> because I'm seeing, number one, that happening, which is locking the vendors in. I I'm sorry, locking the customers in. Mm -hmm. And they're introducing these subscription models, which are increasing your costs mm -hmm. and giving them even greater control of your data. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious how you manage those vendors. Certainly share a space is a way out of that. Sorry for being so verbose. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say that uh, uh, for a long time we haven't really been able to invest so much in our solutions, which is the easy way of keeping the vendors out because we haven't changed the basic system so much. And when we look into the future, this is a a really strong uh, requirement that we do have on future solutions that we are able to keep the border towards partners and suppliers and being able to handle the data inside. I'm not sure if that really answers uh, the question. Yeah, it's but almost <laughs> more of a discussion topic yeah, rather it's... than a real question. Mm. I apologize for that, but... <laughs> we could come back to that later in some It's context. just such an important point yeah, it is. in it the is. trends of the yeah. industry now. Absolutely. Yeah, the last yep. question. Yeah. Um, I think it's very brave what you did, just keeping all the complexity and just focus on parts. I think if I look at that, we should start there. Do you have any idea of the full collaboration potential? You know, is it like a Pareto? Do you solve 80% of the problems by just exchanging parts? I think we solve uh, quite a lot of the needs. And then, of course, we have a bit of manual work on the side, people, pe person to person connection, and sort of discussion around the features, for example. And from that, establishing how it should be uh, released in the different systems. So it's a sort of common release team uh, which solves the part that we can't map automatically or by the system. Is it worth it all to invest more into technology or is it, do you think people is the better way than I, for the I, complex I think stuff? it's a good uh, balance in the way we do it right now to keep it like that. Otherwise the people would spend so much time trying to sort out mistakes in the mapping since we try to map something that's really complex and it will uh, bring, it in, it bring us into other kind of problems. So, with that, thank you very much for a good discussion, and uh, most of all, Irene, for coming here and doing this presentation. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for inviting me, and thank you.